The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the July 11th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstances of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but even more important than that. And that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't call in, Stevie's got your back. Go ahead and send me an email. Send that off early and send it to steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And, of course, if you're inside our Tigers, then well, then any. And every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We're going to begin our day with a mixed bag. That's kind of the soup du jour out here. We've got the Dow trading up 104, about a quarter percent. Half percent to the downside for the S&P, or 29 points. One and three tenths for the NASDAQ to the downside, 276 points there. Three and a half percent to the upside for the Russell. That's 70 points there. They're expecting, I suppose, a rate cut. I think they're going to be very disappointed there. If we take a look at the semis, they're off 105 points, nearly 2% to the downside. Trendy's up 245, 1 and 6 tenths percent. Gold's up 44 bucks, 1 and 8 tenths percent there. Silver, 2 and 6 tenths percent, or 81 pennies. About a half a percent for the likes to be crude, or 50 cents, 47 cents to be exact. We're down a nickel inside of natural gas, and up 1 point and 11 ticks inside the 30-year uh, treasury, print out at 120.03. Now, our leader in the clubhouse, the upside, is a micro strategy. A $65 move, 5%. Top build, $31, 8%. United Rentals, $28, 4%. Equinix, $25, 3%. And MedPace Holdings, $16 move, nearly 4% to the upside. To the downside, it is Lamb Research getting slammed, down 3%, $33. Costco, $33, nearly 4%. The Bank of Montreal, 27.50, nearly 5%. Broadcom, 24 bucks, a little over 1%. And Asimil Holdings down 18, 1 and 7 tenths percent. So we got movers and we've got shakers. Heck, talk about movers and shakers. Let's still take a look at what's going on inside the currency market. Let's start by taking a look at the U.S. dollar here. Now, in order to take, so first, if we take a look at the, uh, uh, July, the September contract, we can see that price is trading into a cluster of rising trend line support out there. If we look at the weekly, time frame chart we can see that price is pulling back into a bullish structured profile zone that zone is between 103.10 and 103.93 out there so the u.s dollar index may have found support let's switch off of this and let's go take a look at the currency pairs three of the currency pairs that make that up they make up what 83 percent of the entire weighting inside that so we're going to take a look at the euro the yen is the one that really had uh, well they've all had pretty big reactions this morning to the cpi date out there let's start with the euro the euro's move higher today has triggered what a TD9 count top is going to go ahead and confirm today. It's going to complete tomorrow. So that strength inside the euro is likely to turn to weakness over the course of between today and uh, tomorrow, at least by, by Friday, I would say. 
Tomorrow is Friday. Jeez, man, am I on top of my game or what? So you're going to get a TD nine count top out there. That should take price back towards its oscillator and change line, currently at 107. That move lower inside the yen, that means it was strengthening against the U.S. dollar index. What did it do? It found support of that TD nine count breakout level. Folks, learn the TD nine count pattern if you're trading, especially for the daily time frame. You don't need to have the cool tool that I've got out there. You can do this on your own. I teach you how to do that. You can see, and it would help you. If you were trading the year of the yen out here and you went to the uh, short side, in this case here, because of a TD9 count top, a Rhodesman indicator signal that was present, you would have known that that 157.92 area would have been a place to tighten your stop, maybe take off the trade, do anything along those lines. And how about the Great British Pound? Great British Pound is in bar number eight today. Uh, when you get to bar number eight, 90 percent of the time, in this case here, we've moved far enough away from bar number five that odds favor a TD9 count top. Uh, completes, uh, com uh, confirms tomorrow and completes on Monday. That says that its strength should turn to weakness and then the U.S. dollar index should move into a strengthening position out there. So that's what the currency pairs are saying to both you and I. We're going to close this up. What are we going to go take a look at next? Actually, I'm going to go take a look at I'm going to go back to the black background charts just for a moment out there. And we're going to take a look at the New York Stock Exchange Advanced Client Oscillator. Even though Peter from Park City hasn't asked about that, I know he's thinking about it. How do I know that? Oh, I don't know that. I'm just guessing. And here, Peter, if we take a look at the New York Stock Exchange Advanced Client Oscillator, that's panel number three or panel number two from the bottom, panel number three from the top. What do we see its reading is right now? Now, does it matter what its reading is at 11.12 versus 4 p.m.? No. But right now at 11.12, we're above the 150 level. If we were to stay like this, then we all of a sudden have gotten into the overbought uh, area out there. What's that mean? Usually we get up to that 150 level. Now, when you close above 150, it suggests that we should see higher price in the future. That future does not necessarily mean tomorrow or the next day. Uh, so that's kind of a more of a futuristic uh, signal. But here we're getting into a overbought condition, that overbought condition, just like when we get down to the minus 150 level, the oversold condition needs to be worked off. Well, guess what? The overbought condition would need to be worked off as well. But this could change throughout the day out there. So we'll certainly want to keep an eye on that. Now let's go back and let's take a look at what's going on inside the equity future contracts market markets. Then we're going to take a look. Actually, let's do what we did yesterday. I think that might be a little bit better approach out here. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at each of the uh, equity futures contracts along with the ETFs, along with the indices. And here in the case of the Russell 2000, you can see that this thing has just screamed higher out there. Let's open up the cash indice, which yesterday, which today is confirming an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. It's just getting back to a resistance level, though. That resistance level is its prior roadsman indicator top. That formed on the trading day of April Fool's Day. It's really the high of the prior day, that bearish engulfing candle. That's your resistance level. So the real resistance area out here here inside the Russell 2000 is 21.35.50. If we close above that, well, then we're likely to head higher and we're likely to see a larger A to B equals CD pattern. And I could draw that one in for you. This would look like this. Here's your A to B point. Stevie's just going to move this over to the C point out there, which is the A point of that smaller A to B equals CD pattern. And that would then give us up a price projection somewhere in the uh, 2170 type area. I am not saying we're headed there. First, what I want to be able to share with you is prices running into resistance. That's going to be that April or March 28th high out there. We come back from this break, we're going to take a look at the other. So you got the same pattern really in essence going on inside the IWM. Now the IWM has volume up at those highs of 37 million shares. And today so far what we've done is uh, 23 million shares, some big volume. Steve Rhodes with TFNN, we'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. 
But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Let's uh, continue with the indices out here. So we know that the Russell 2000 is trading in the resistance out there. It's got to take out that resistance out there. Otherwise, it could turn back to the downside, and particularly the S&P 500. It completed a TD9. This is the cash indice. It completed a TD9 count top yesterday, a bearish reversal candle, which right now is a dark cloud cover. All that it needs to do is close halfway into yesterday's body out there. I don't know exactly where that's at, but you can calculate that on your own. And if price closes below that, then you'd also have a sell the D point pattern. Now, what should unfold, regardless of whether you have one or two tops out there, is price should pull back to support. So on the cash indice, that support level is going to be at 55.89 or thereabouts. That's that green oscillator and change line. If you close below that, price will have lost its momentum and is likely to retrace even further, could even target its breakout level at 54.46. I'm not saying that's what it's going to do. We have to take this one step at a time. If we take a look at the ES Mini out there, what it really needs is a bearish reversal candle to confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator. I sell the D point top out there. Uh, short of that, price may be just pulling back to test support, and support for it is at about 56.43 as we speak right now. The SPY, much like the cash indice, as a dark cloud cover candle, it could create both a sell the D point top as well as a TD knockout top, which is being confirmed today. That should take price back to about 557.08. We close below 557.08. We're likely to see a move towards the 550.12 level. That's the top of its daily profile. Oddly enough, the equal weighted ETF has woken up. It's trading above, as best I can tell, the top of its consolidation pattern. The top of its consolidation pattern right at about the level of uh, 166.39. We close above that, the equal weight is suggesting that it wants to move up to and may a, make a measured move, which is equal to or greater than the consolidation. And that would be above 171. So we have odd signals out here inside these markets. 
We'll just take stuff one step at a time. Let's close out this set of charts. Let's go take a look at the NQ, see what kind of signals it's providing to you and I. That's not what's going to pop up on your screen, unfortunately. That's going to be gold. We'll get to uh, gold and silver and the GDX as well. But first, let's take a look at the NQ. The NQ completes its TD9 count top today. It also, at this stage here, has a key reversal bar. So it's going to generate a sell the D point top. It's going to generate a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. We got three tops out there inside the NQ. I think it's trying to top. Now, what we also have, though, is a brand new set of profiles. Now, these profiles will not be confirmed until this evening. We use them now. We use any data that we can acquire. And where's the next level of support inside the NQ? Well, uh, it turns out that this is a slightly bullish structured profile. So it's really a zone of support. And the zone is between 2397 and 2632. If we take a look at the NASDAQ 100, same set of patterns out there, all three types of tops. And if price close below 20, 440 or thereabouts, uh, the NQ of lost momentum, it'll suggest a further retracement. The Qs, much like the NQ, has also formed a new profile. Also the same three topping patterns out there. It has a buy zone, which is between 492.62 and 495.34 out there. The equal weight, much like the RSP for the S&P 500, the equal weight inside the Qs, QQEW, does not have a top. Again, very odd out here. Very odd. Uh, nonetheless, let's watch these support levels inside the Qs between 492 and that 495 level, the NQ 2397 and 2632 as we speak right now. Let's finish this off and take a look at the Dow Equity Future contract, which yesterday negated a sell the D point uh, top. It's actually formed a new A to B equals C to pattern to the upside. The YM has resistance. Now, now the other thing is, though, so today has triggered yes they triggered it as well um, and that is a wave number seven signal that's letter g now that requires a lower high so there is a potential topping pattern here for the dow if that doesn't form and we continue to see higher highs price is going to go target 40 433 a td9 count breakdown resistance level the cash indice would be 39905 it does not it is not in wave number seven it's only in wave number it's going to extend wave number five. But that resistance level at 39,905.80, that can be where a rally ends. If you close above that, suggest suggests higher price. The Dow Diamonds, the number is 399.06. Same set of patterns out there. This, In the case of the Dow Diamonds, it's actually in leg number six to the upside. And the equal weighted Dow is testing its resistance level, which is between 33.96. And yes, we're trading above the top of that resistance level at 34.07. I just don't know what it looks like at day's end. So that's the Dow, that's the Russell, that's the NQ, that's the ES Mini out there. Uh, we took a look at the currency pairs. What do we want to do next out here? I know what we should do next. Let's go take a look at a couple of questions that have come in, as we got lots that we can take a look at. That first question coming in early this morning, and that was from Mike in New Hampshire. Mike, nice to hear from you. Mike likes a QS is the ticker symbol, folks, that we're taking a look at. I believe that is, um, what is that, Quantum... Uh, something like that. Quant Quantum Scape Corporation out there. Having one heck of a move. Now, the question that uh, Mike wants to know is where can he add position? He has been building a position out here. And uh, and well done there, Mike. Uh, this did form a TD9 count bottom. Uh, that came in. The low was on June 21st out there. That low was tested on June the 27th. It was again tested on July 2nd out there. And now what we have is price trading above the top of its daily profile. 532. No topping signal out there. So the question is, are you going to try to chase this to the upside? I'm not recommending that. So we'll take a look at areas of potential support on some type of a pullback. Not that I have a signal that we're going to get a pullback with the exception of one thing. And what is that, Mike, if you're watching us on Tiger TV? You're exactly right. It is a top of that weekly profile. So although we've had a nice move and we're trying to understand, why did Quantum Scape... Um, Stop where it did today. Why didn't that rally continue? And not that it can't continue, but why did it stop there? And the answer is sticking right in our face. That's the top of the daily of the weekly profile, and that's at 706. Now, Mike, if tomorrow price can close above that, you're going to get a weekly profile change in trend. I don't have any kind of a bottom signal out here, or pattern, I should say, on a weekly basis. But when you do close above profile resistance, that gives you a profile change in trend signal. Now, Where's your next resistance band? Well, we've got 615 is the daily TD9 count breakdown level. 
Um, of course, that is uh, 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 well. That's not your next level of resistance. My apology. That is your potential level of support on a retracement. So 706 holds. The first place that you would want to consider adding would be 615. Now, you got still this wide gap that's out there. So you probably want to go back and take a look at the gaps on uh, QS out here, although we're pretty much at the low. So I have to assume every single gap has been filled. Um, on a monthly time frame, your resistance level, next resistance level to the upside is 854. So your questions were, hey, you're trying to build a position. Where is it that you should add? I think what you need to do is add the Texas two-step chart to your trading plan. So we can see this thing has been moving lower. We haven't seen more than a three to four bar rally out here. Today is going to become bar number four of your rally. Last time we had a four bar rally out here was on the trading day of March the 20th out there. Now conditions may have been different back then. When I say conditions, I don't know where we were trading in relationship to profile, the oscillator and change line. But because we have gotten a bar number four today, odds favor a pullback. And I would say that pullback would be two consecutive days in a row. So that's what I would start looking for. Pullbacks here are typically two to three bars, and that would be one way to add to your position. Hope that helps you out, Mike. Great to hear from you. Steve Rosewood, TFN. Great. Tigers, it's back. The annual July Tiger Dollar Sale. If you've been wanting to try one of our products, from our stellar newsletters to educative webinars, now is the time. From now until July 22nd, we're offering a 20, 30, even a 40% bonus on Tiger Dollar purchases. After being applied to your account, your Tiger Dollars will be used for all purchases. They can be easily transferred and never expire. If you want to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus when purchasing Tiger Dollars, now's your chance. This is a perfect opportunity to try out a newsletter or save big on your current subscription. This deal is only available until July 22nd, so lock in your bonuses fast. Go to TFNN.com today to lock in your bonus. TFNN, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento Friday, July 12th and Friday, July 26th, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern Time for three hours of live trading. For this month only, use promo code LarryJuly24 at checkout to save $50 on your first month's subscription. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. 
Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. we got the charts for Lithium American Corp up on our screen out here. This is for uh, LB, who's looking to add to his position out here. So here's what I see. So it's a little bit dangerous. Uh, when I say dangerous, I'm first looking at the longer term chart out here, uh, Lee, and that is the monthly time frame chart. And we can see that price is trading below a TD9 count bottom that has failed. It's trading below profile. It's trading below red oscillator and change line. What's sticking out like a sore thumb is $1.48. That's its TD9 count breakout level. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, it also has negated a TD9 count bottom. Price is trading above this week. It's oscillator and change line. Uh, but what? Uh, but what I'd really like to see here is some type of bullish reversal candidate to confirm that Rhodesman indicator bottom. Short of that, I don't know. Now, look, the daily still has a Rhodesman indicator bottom. That went ahead and confirmed on July 3rd. That means the low of July 2nd is your key level of support out there. We're still trading inside that swing point out here, although really the new swing point is the one from a couple of days ago, July 9th. So you do have a daily signal uh, that's a bottom. If you if you if your heart is intent on buying, then I'd say now would be a time to do that. I just say caution Will Robinson because of that weekly, but mostly that monthly time frame chart out there, knowing that you've taken a position already. Um, I would want some additional confirmation of at least some type of bottom. And, you know, look, this might be day number two of consecutive moves higher out here. We haven't gotten past four, which is pretty normal. And once you get past four, you do five consecutive, six consecutive. That's a signal of a, a change in the trend out there. So I would just offer caution with regard to LAC. I can take a quick peek here at an intraday chart, a 30-minute time frame chart. Here on the 30-minute time frame chart, I don't see any, well, I see, yeah, I see a sell the deep point pattern that formed with this uh, bearish shooting star at 11 o'clock, a bearish engulfing at 11.30. Looks like this wants to pull back to about the 262 level out there. So, Lee, I hope that helps you out with regard to LAC, and uh, I think you kind of get my, my gist out there. So thank you for that request. Let's go on to uh, Peter in Park City. He doesn't want to just look at that New York Stock Exchange advanced decline oscillator. He wants to take a look at wheat. And we take a look at wheat. What do we know? We know on the monthly time frame, the December wheat contract has a TD nine count bottom. We also know that price is trading with inside a new profile. That new profile has got supported 585.10. Uh, it's a it's a buy zone. That buy zone is between 585.10 and 623.80. If you get a close above 623.80, you're on your way up to the 701.20 level. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, what's the weekly time frame chart doing? Well, the weekly time frame chart completed a TD nine count top. That's taken price all the way back to its breakout level. Its breakout level is 581.50. So that area is held. It's been tested for two of the last three weeks out there. That's suggesting it's a bottom. However, you've got resistance at 630.36 and at 642.18 on any rally. The daily time frame formed a TD9 count bottom. It does, does this on June 26. That TD9 count bottom was tested and rejected yesterday. It triggered a Rhodesman to indicator signal. Right now, you got a bullish engulfing candle. The daily says, I'm trying to form a bottom. Now, it's running into a consolidation with inside its profile, Peter. The December contract has resistance at 613.63, and it's got support at the 585.93. But really, the support's going to be yesterday's low. That's the assumption that we do get that bullish reversal candle today. And right now we do have that bullish engulfing candle out there if price can close above that 613.63 level then you've still got 623 to contend with you close above 623 you're on your way to 671 or 701 that's how i would take a look at the december contract so i hope that helps you out peter and as always thanks so much for your request the next request coming in is from marvin and marvin wants to set up a swing trade on ml G-O. And MLGO is doing what? Well, first on a daily time frame, Marvin Price is trading below the bottom of its daily profile. So that suggests that this may want to pull back further. Now, this had a gigantic breakout. When I say gigantic, wide-ranging bar, huge volume for MLGO. That volume was 185 million shares on June the 4th out there. Price is trading below that low. 
So maybe price is going to pull all the way back to that prior candle out there. That prior candle could be anywhere between 156 and 172. If I look at the weekly time frame chart out here, and this is not a – because of these price moves out here from 160 down to 4 bucks, it's hard for me to really get a lot of data. That's not going to help me. Well, but now I'm on the weekly chart. This has support. At 494, we're trading at 423. This suggests a move back to the 259 level out there. So uh, you're trying to add, you know, uh, make a swing trade out here. I think you've got to be patient and wait. And that monthly chart is really not helping us. So I'm going to suggest that you wait. Maybe we get a TD9 count pattern. You have to tick below yesterday's low to get bar number uh, to get a uh, uh, the potential of that. Uh, you don't have to tick below it today, but you certainly have to tick below it by Tuesday. I'm sorry, by Monday of next week. So maybe we take a look at this, Marvin, again, come Monday of next week, Monday or Tuesday. But I don't see that as a swing trade option. Option at the moment, but hey, I've been wrong before, and I'll be wrong again. Let's go take a look at Palantir. This is for SNP inside the Tiger's Den. Palantir SNP is going to go ahead and complete a TD nine count top pattern today. That should result in at least one thing, which is a retracement back to support. And that first level of support is that green oscillator and change line. The current print is twenty six ninety nine. If price closes below that, the next level of support would be 2620. Now that is in lieu of any new profiles that could form, but right now we use the profiles that exist out there. And if price gets back in 2620, shoot, you can easily move down to the 2405 level. That's the daily chart for Palantir. The weekly chart for Palantir says, well, let me see if I can clear the swing point from the week that ended March 8th of 2024. And that volume out there was 523 thousand shares today so far through thursday we're at 187 if price closes below that high s p uh yeah that high again just let me give that to you is 2750 you would get a test and rejection of a swing point on lighter volume you know what that says if you can't bust them to the upside you're going to try to bust them to the downside now the downside support first one 2542 and below that Shoot, it's 1796. What it would really be would be the prior swing points out here. That would take you back to the April 19th area. And that's down at about the 2033 level. If we take a look at the monthly chart for Palantir, you're going to go ahead very likely and confirm a TD9 count top at the end of the month. That pattern would complete next month. Right now, you're up at resistance, 2711. So you got resistance on the monthly. You got basically what looks like resistance on the weekly, a TD9 count top on the daily. All this is suggesting to you and I price will pull back. But I don't know which levels of support will hold. So you got to watch that first one, and that's around that $27 area. So S&P, I hope that helps out. Uh, what you were, I hope that provides you with the information we're looking for. And we come back from this break. We've got a request by Mohammed by email, G-Man inside the Tiger's Den, Duncan inside the Tiger's Den, and they all want to take a look at the amazing one. That's Amazon. We'll be right back. spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Let's go take a look at Amazon. Amazon had formed a TD9 count top. It uh, went ahead and completed that pattern back on July 3rd out there. That pattern is still in effect. Uh, we then saw a Rhodesman Dimindicator uh, pattern that was confirmed a few days ago on July 8th. That was a key reversal bar. Again, the high of that bar, the prior bar was exceeded. The low was exceeded as well. And we closed at least one tick in the opposite direction of the downside. So you had two different tops out there. And then uh, two days ago, we had a new profile that formed. Now, that profile support is at 195.98. We are trading below 195.98 right now. Assuming that we close below that again tomorrow, we'll have a profile change in trend on a daily time frame for Amazon. That'll suggest lower price. Now, the lower price target is going to be 182.72 for the daily time frame. But before price gets down there, we have to take a look at the weekly chart, see if there's any weekly profile support or any other kind of support. Well, turns out that on a weekly basis, if you do get a bearish reversal candle come tomorrow, Right now, we've got a dark cloud cover candle. That would confirm a Roachman to indicator top. Price right now is trading below that oscillator and change line at 195.61. But that's going to matter, Mohammed, G-Man, and Duncan, tomorrow's close. Does, if price closes below that, then that suggests to Stevie and to you, we're going to see lower price inside of Amazon. The monthly time frame chart, it would have a sell the D point top of a bearish reversal candle were it to form at month's end. We are in bar number eight to the upside. So it's got the potential for some tops there. But right now, it's the daily and the weekly that are overtaking this. Amazon was trigger selling, was selling. Amazon was uh, uh, telling us that it was trying to form a top, and indeed it has done that. Now it's a matter of watching the weekly time frame chart. So I hope that the uh, three of you, um, that this provided you with the information that you were looking for. Uh, Peter wants to take a look at Microsoft as well. I'll tell you what we're going to do, Peter. Let's do this here. We started doing this yesterday because I don't have any other questions that I see at this moment in time. And so we were going to, we started, it was too late in the show when I started that, but was looking at the underlying instruments inside the NDX and the S&P 500. Now, what I mean by that, I can't take a look at all 500 instruments for the S&P, but what I can do is take a look at the top eight. And the top eight for the, uh, well, I know that the top eight equal 32% of the weighting. I didn't realize that. Microsoft is number one, and that's what you wanted to look at, Peter. We take a look at Microsoft. Microsoft has a sell the D point pattern. It did that 
a few days ago when it formed that bearish reversal candle, that Three River Evening Star. Now we've got price that is testing profile support. What Microsoft is doing, it is testing its buy zone. And the buy zone is between 447.93 and 452.47. So, Peter, the key level to be watching here is that zone, but most importantly, 447.93. If price close below 447.93, Microsoft for its daily time frame, in lieu of any other profiles it would form, would be suggesting to move back to its breakout level, and that would be at 416.30. On a weekly time frame chart, it has a wave number seven top. Price was just consolidated with inside it. I'm sorry, geez, I'm looking at NVIDIA right now. Sorry, don't worry, I'll, I'll pay attention. NVIDIA has a wave number seven top. Price was consolidating with inside its daily profile. It's still doing that. Uh, price likely to target 125.35. You close below that, it'll be its prior swing points. You close below the bottom of its hammer candle, the hammer candle from about a week and a half ago, which is uh, 118.83. If you close below that, 106.94 is on the way. Apple has completed. It completed a TD9 count top yesterday. It was a bar following bar number nine. We're trading below its oscillator and change line. That oscillator and change line at a 227.54. If we close below that, we're likely to see a move down to 210.30. Now, we're not looking at weekly charts or anything along those lines to try to put all this together. I'm just providing you with what the daily charts are con uh, communicating to you and I. We've already taken a look at Amazon. This is, now, these are the top eight instruments inside the S&P 500. Again, they're waiting, at least as of, I think, Friday was about 32% out there. If we take a look at Meta, Meta right now is doing what? They thought there was a profile out here. I think there is not. No, uh, hold on. Yeah, there was a new profile that formed. So what Meta is doing, it was a bullish structured profile that formed yesterday. Support there was 522.95. We're trading below that right now. We're trading below the oscillator and change line. It's going to go target its swing points, its recent swing point swing points out there, but it may really be targeting its breakout level at 473.23 out there. That's on Meta and Facebook. How about Google? Google has is forming a road momentum indicator top. Its first level of support is going to be 186.31. If we close below 186.31, we're looking at 181.56, followed by 176.81, followed by 174.38. Berkshire Hathaway, bucking the trend out here, trading to the upside, but just trading in a sideways consolidation pattern, as we can see. So, you know, don't get your hopes up here, not at least just yet, with regard to Berkshire Hathaway. And Eli Lilly is forming a road momentum indicator top. Its first stop to the downside, because price is below the oscillator and change line, is going to be the 913 and 905.33. Now, if price closed below 905.33, it tells us on a daily time frame that the move lower is more than a counter trend move to the downside. And that would open up the door for 890 or even 852.23. So I believe that all eight of the top eight instruments that make up the uh, S&P 500, the weighting S&P 500, all have topping patterns and with the exception of Berkshire Hathaway, so I take that back, and are trading lower. Now, let's go take a look at the top eight inside of the um, inside of the NDX 100. We'll skip over the ones that are duplicates out here. So we'll just get to the ones. Shoot, I think it's this one. It's so small, it's hard for me to tell. Amazon upper right. Microsoft, have going. Yeah, okay, so we're good. We've covered Microsoft, we've covered Apple, we've covered NVIDIA, we've covered Amazon, we haven't covered um, a Broadcom. Broadcom still has a TD9 count top with price consolidated with inside its profile, with price below that green oscillator and change line. Odds would favor a move back to 1630.38, the bottom of its profile. The other one that we haven't covered here is Costco. Costco generated a road's momentum indicator top two days ago on July 9th when it formed that uh, bearish shooting star candle. Now price is testing support. And the support levels inside of Costco will start from the bottom to the top, 838.66, 842.93, and the one that's being tested right now, which is the top of the profile, 851.47. So it does indeed, based on looking at the underlying instruments that make up and now the weighting here for these eight, it's 45% of the QQQ series ETF out there. Um, let's switch back to a different screen. Let's go take a gold, the uh, silver, and the GDX. And let's see what they're doing. Oh, geez, I should have. I'll find out momentarily. Let me change over to that set of charts out there. And then I'll know if I'm in the right spot or not. So let's see. Do we still have charts? 
Oh, we do. Beautiful thing. So what do we know about Goldilocks? Well, one of the things that we know about Goldilocks is that I don't mean to be a uh, part of the pity party out there, but bar number eight is now in place from a daily time frame. That says that gold could form a TD9 count top between today and Monday. So we'll keep an eye on that. But right now, price is trading above profile resistance, above green asset and change line, above a consolidation, which was inside the consolidation. Odds favor a move up to that 2470-ish level, the top of that consolidation. However, it does look like we are going to get some type of top over the course of the next few days. Now, that may be tying out to what you and I looked at. We looked at the yen, the euro, the great British pound, and it looks like the dollar is getting ready to bottom out there. And that's what we also saw when we looked at that U.S. dollar index. Silver is trying to break through a uh, rising, uh, descending trend line. If it can do that, it'll go target 3305. And where are we on the GDX? We're in bar number eight of a TD9 count. Much like Goldilocks could form a top between today and Monday. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We've got three we question here. I'm going to try to get through them quickly. The first one coming from Jeff Lynn from ELO. And we take a look at the SMCI. It's pulling back right now today, and it's testing that key level of support. That's that green oscillator and change on it, 866.81. This is a uh, daily bearish structured profile. So price close below that oscillator and change on odds favor pull back to the 813 level out there, the weekly chart. 
found resistance so far at its oscillator and change line. It has not closed above it. ELO, if you ever get a close above that line right now, it's 937.03. Price will move up to the 1147 level out there. So sorry for the quick review, but got to do three of them. Hopefully that provided you with the information you're looking for. Dan is looking at Hecla pushing into the May highs. Now, where it's run into resistance, that's the beauty of the TD9 count pattern. Price has gotten back to where it had broken down. That's at 692, 592. Now, if price can close above 592, Dan, I'm on board with you. It should go test the highs of for Hecla uh, from uh, the uh, May uh, May 20th level. Now, that had volume of 13 million shares. You're trading into that, even though you've rejected those, that the low of that uh, swing point out there, but you've done it with 6.2 million shares. I don't know if the volume is going to keep up, but if it does, and you get above uh, 13 million shares at day's end, even if you reject the low of that swing point, which is 598, price will get back up there and test that as well, at least again, but it's got to plow through that 692 level, and talk about plowing through. We're going to go take a look at the uh, third request that is in here. This coming in from uh, Ron M. He wants to take a look at RYCEY, Ricey out there. And his question is, is price pushing through resistance out here? Here's what we've got, Ron. You've got a monthly TD9 count top. So price has to close above the high. That is at 611 for this thing to truly push through resistance. The weekly has a road's momentum indicator top. The uh, swing point that is trading in has volume of 13 million shares. This week, we're pushing up into it with 7.6 million shares. Light volume price trading with inside its profile. The resistance there is up at the high, which is at 593, supported 558 out there. So is it pushing into resistance? Yes. Is it doing with volume? It's not out there. And on a daily time frame, you're also consolidating with inside the daily profile as well. Folks, thanks so much for joining me. Please come back tomorrow on Fantastic Friday. Please have a terrific Thursday and uh, just be safe out there. Take care.